I don't know if I enjoyed this experience. Not warm enough for me to want to stay out here reading. <laughs> I'm gonna go back inside. It's not supposed to be a five star book. It's supposed to be like a nice palette cleanser. This video kind of put me in a reading slump. This video ends when I find a five star read. That's what we're doing today. I'm very excited. It might take a few weeks. That's just how it's gonna be. Okay? Okay. <laughs> so right now I'm reading Sidetracked in the Mind F series, but I'm not gonna count that in this video because I already know. I think I'm gonna give it five stars. After I finish Sidetracked, I'm going to read The Deal, which is like a fake dating trope, hockey, hockey romance, you know. I'm becoming a hockey girly. <laughs> I mean, I haven't read a hockey romance that I've given like five stars or anywhere close to five stars. So The Deal by Elle Kennedy. Essentially, how this whole fake dating situation happens is that she has her eyes set on this man. She has a huge crush on this guy. And I guess in order to catch his attention or, I don't know, make her seem like worthwhile, she wants this hockey player to like go on dates with her and like kind of you know do this whole fake dating situation so the dude she has a crush on will be more interested in her if that makes sense i'm sure it'll make more sense as i read it but i feel like that's kind of like a common situation <laughs> i'm going to start reading this today sidetracked i am like in the middle of it right now but it's only like 120 pages so <laughs> i will be done with that in like 30 minutes <laughs> and then we will read the deal if i don't give sidetracked five stars i will tell you and that can be part of this video but it's, it's not because i already want to give it five stars <laughs> anyways <laughs> so glad you're joining me on this journey I was wondering why exactly she needs a fake date with this hockey player, but it's starting to make a little more sense. She did chat with her crush for a little bit at this party, so he does know that she exists. That's good. And then we find out that maybe her crush's type is girls who have a certain social status, you know? which would mean that her going on dates with the captain of the hockey team would, you know, bring up her social status to a standard where her crush would be interested in dating her. And for reference, her crush's name is Justin. So far, I've seen nothing to suggest that we should like Garrett more than Justin. <laughs> Though Garrett doesn't actually seem that bad now that we've gotten to know him. So I just finished Misery, which I wasn't like officially reading with this challenge, but I didn't give it five stars. I gave it four and a half. So I figured I'd just mention it here. But after reading that book, you know, very much horror. <laughs> um, I'm not really in the mood for romance. So I'm going to put a pause on The Deal by L. Kennedy. I haven't really been reading it since I've been reading Misery because I just physically couldn't read any other books <laughs> while reading that. So I'm still only 14% through the deal. So I'm like not even close to being done. Going from horror, like Stephen King horror to like light, fluffy, cheesy <laughs> hockey romance is just not the vibe. Like it's just too stark of a difference. I can't do it. So instead, I'm going to read Rock, Paper, Scissors, because this is another book on my TBR for February, which I haven't finished yet. And yeah, so I just started reading that last night. I'm only like 10 pages in. <laughs> Already, one of my theories is not looking very promising. <laughs> I was basically like...
I guess that wasn't it. <laughs> I should probably read like at least the first chapter before I go into my theories. <laughs> I, th I guess they got like an Airbnb and it is like this church. Yeah, they're staying in this church and the person who they're re like renting it for the weekend from was like, the door will be unlocked and it wasn't. And then they like circled around the building didn't find any other door so they came back to the front and all of a sudden like the front door was wide open so Ooh. <laughs> it was like a very little oh spooky <laughs> scene but i'm also like r listening to audiobooks but they're just to pass the time while i'm driving so i don't really care to include them in this video that was unnecessary to tell you. I'm, I'm gonna go. Okay. Bye. I'm 50% of the way through rock, paper, scissors right now, and I'm really liking it so far. Um, it's definitely like a different vibe than I expected. Like, I feel like it's less thriller in the, in the sense of, uh, oh, there's this third party that's like trapped them in this house and is like out to get them or something. And it's more of a, wow, these people have a horrible marriage and I feel like they're out to kill each other. I enjoy it. I don't think it'll be a five star, but I do think it'll be like, a four star at least maybe like a 4.25 i think that's where i'm at right now like 4.25 like it's good it's definitely really good i just like don't know how i feel because it's like so much different than i expected it's pretty warm for a February day in Wisconsin but not warm enough for me to want to stay out here reading <laughs> I'm gonna go back inside I just finished rock paper scissors and I think I'm gonna stick with my 4.25 rating from earlier it was really good don't get me wrong I really liked it it just wasn't a five star for me I kind of did guess the ending, like, the more I read, the more, like, I fine-tuned my guess of the ending, which was fairly accurate. Honestly, like, it, like, my first guess for the whole book was accurate in a sense. It's obviously not, like, exactly what I was thinking would happen for my, like, premature guess, knowing absolutely nothing about anything but it was like shockingly very close to what i predicted <laughs> it made sense like that was like the logical direction to go with the story it was more of a question of what are the specifics of this situation and honestly the specifics of the situation kind of just made the characters a little worse like in a sense that they're not good people which i think is pretty clear throughout the book for the majority of the book i was like you know, I feel like this chapel isn't haunted. There's definitely some sketchy things going on. Like, maybe there's a third party, but I feel, I felt like the real thrilling part of the story was how awful the couple's relationship was. That's kind of true. There's, like, a few characters that you see outside of the couple. It's mainly just the two of them. And then, like, the third party that comes in. Everything that was revealed, I figured out a few chapters before which she's kind of like pushing you in that direction like there's definitely hints very early on in the book i like kind of guessed certain parts that ended up being accurate i was like but that just doesn't make sense <laughs> with how the story's going you know uh, that's kind of what was going on that's kind of what happened i was like trying to connect it on my mind like how does this work like did they not actually say this in the beginning all of that to say a very good book, but not quite five stars for me. I feel ready to go into the world of romance. I will be reading The Deal, 
we will get into our hockey romance portion of today's video but I, I'm a little worried that since I you know I read two other books in between like when I started it and when I'm gonna finish it I also listened to some audiobooks and I'm worried that's gonna like interfere with how I feel about it you know there's just too much in between I also I wanted to listen to an audiobook because I was going on a walk with my dog Harvey and I did pick up another book which I'll include in this video. It is like a pretty highly rated book. I don't know if it'll be five stars for me. It is literary fiction and I do love literary fiction. I'm a lit fic girly. Lit fic girly, thriller girly. I'm trying to get into the whole hockey girly thing going on but I actually I haven't found a hockey romance book that has been like five stars for me which maybe that's fine. Maybe that's just how it's meant to be. It's not supposed to be a five-star book. It's supposed to be like a nice palate cleanser, you know, like a four-star book. I get so sidetracked and I'm so sorry. But I got Pineapple Street. Okay, you can kind of see that. Yeah. <laughs> I got Pineapple Street from Libby, you know, the little like library app. And so far, I think it's a really nice audiobook to listen to. I'm kind of hoping that it'll be a similar listening vibe to Tom Lake, which I really enjoyed. But, I mean, that was narrated by Meryl Streep, so I don't know if it'll be <laughs> quite as good of an audiobook as Tom Lake. The vibes aren't too far off right now, and that was 4.5 for me. I feel like, you know, I'm starting these books, I'm like, I don't think it's gonna be a five star, you know? It could still definitely be a five star. I've definitely read books that turned into five stars, like, at the very end, but... <laughs> I'm a little worried that this video is gonna go on, like, forever. Like, I'll definitely read five star books, but, like, will I pick them up for this video, you know? That's the question. So yeah, we're reading the deal. We're listening to Pineapple Street. Maybe one of them will be five stars. I'm not feeling it right now, even though I'm like barely into them. I'm very judgmental, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I give five stars out too easily and other times I feel like I don't give them out easily enough. There's no in between. I'll check in with you guys when I'm about like 50% through maybe so we don't keep having all this chit chat. We don't need all this. We have so many books that we need to get through in order to find my five star. <laughs> I'm now 77% of the way through Pineapple Street and I'm 64% of the way through The Deal. It's kind of a race to see which one I finish first. Actually, so far I'm really liking both of them. I mean, Pineapple Street is more literary fiction and The Deal is obviously hockey romance. I think I'm liking Pineapple Street a little more. I mean, it's like a very different vibe. Pineapple Street is giving very much what is life like for the upper class in Brooklyn. And I mean, you see, I guess, kind of different perspectives. You got the, the parents, the wealthy parents who've made their money in kind of suspicious ways, and they're passing along their wealth to their children. I mean, we mainly follow the Stockton family and what kind of drama is going on in their lives. I'd say there's definitely drama, but it's more like family drama than it is, you know, the classic like romance story drama, like, you know, drugs, alcohol, whatever. There's not, not really any of that. That's not where the drama comes in the story. The drama comes from like, the relationships between everyone in the family, you know, the racist parents and <laughs> Sasha, like a newcomer into the family and there's kind of drama in her trying to fit into the family. But yeah, basically low-key drama in the upper class in the upper class in Brooklyn, New York. And it's kind of giving me like, I haven't read Magnolia Parks, but it's kind of making me want to read Magnolia Parks because I'm like, kind of loving watching them live their fancy pants lives. I'm sure Magnolia Parks is very different, but like it's kind of making me more interested in reading Magnolia Parks, if that makes any sense at all. But I'm really enjoying it. 
I'm thinking maybe 4.5. I think it would have a better chance of being five stars if I was paying more attention while I was reading. <laughs> I've been listening to the audiobook and I've been, I haven't caught quite everything, which is unfortunate because I do really like it. And I've actually been going back through into the, the Kindle version and like rereading what I listened to so I know what's going on because there were like some things in the book that like surprised me and I don't think they were supposed to. <laughs> I just didn't digest something that happened like five chapters earlier so and then I'm also reading The Deal which I'm also getting really close to finishing. I'm actually liking it a lot more than I thought I would. I like don't trust hockey romance that much. I'm trying to consume it you know trying to get into it. Not that I'm trying to force myself to like something when I don't but like I don't not like hockey romance. I like romance it's just I just feel like a lot of the hockey romances I've read have disappointed me in some way. Like I was enjoying it and then not we don't need to talk about that right now but i'm actually i think the deal is going to be my favorite hockey romance so far because i'm really liking it i love a fake dating trope that's very fun you get very fun little fake dating snippets in there what i really like is garrett is like the sweetest guy ever like he he does all the right things approaches everything in the like perfect way essentially <laughs> he's like a really great guy it's very sweet i've re i've heard people compare it to icebreaker and I, I do see if you've read icebreaker i think garrett is kind of similar to the main male character in that one i didn't like icebreaker yeah i'm really liking the deal so far too it'll definitely be four stars at least i'm just not like you know invested you know there's nothing that's really like pulling at me it's just really fun to read. It's like a really good fun book. I do think it'll be my favorite hockey romance unless the ending goes downhill, which I have seen before with the hockey romances. Okay, I have my reading update and I read two more books. I finished reading When You Were Everything and If We Were Villains. Okay, the When You Were Everything, I was not planning on reading this this early, but I actually really liked it. Um, like it's, I feel like I was in like a reading slump or something because every single book I was reading, I would start it off and I'd be like, I don't know guys, I feel like this is like a four star. Like for when you were everything and if you were villains, I was like, I feel like it's a four star. I don't think it's gonna get there, you know? And I was getting like kind of frustrated. Like honestly, this video kind of put me in a reading slump. <laughs> was not great, but I think the story arc of When You Were Everything was really great. You know, it's a story about these friends who, like best friends, like friends for life, friends to the end, and they like fall apart. They have a falling out and you watch them as they slowly, you know, lose trust in each other and break promises and you know, they just can't turn back on all the mistakes that they've made. And you watch them, you know, lose their friendship, like, completely. And you also watch our main character develop new friendships along the way. And, of course, to develop those friendships, she needs to move on from, like, her past friendship that she lost. I feel like there's a lot of good messages in here, and it's, like, a really good story about friendships falling apart and falling together and I honestly like I don't love either of the main characters or like you know the friend that we're following and her best friend who like 
kind of left her behind. Like, they're honestly kind of both at fault here. <laughs> like, they're both pretty bad. I think that just adds to the story. I'd say it. it's a five-star read. It's definitely there. I can't not give it five stars, you know? The best story about friendship that I've ever read and that I think I ever will read. And we got a little bit of romance in there too, which I love. I love a little bit of romance, you know? And then I was, that, I listened to that one on audiobook and I was also listening to, or I was also reading If We Were Villains, which I've been so excited for for a long time. And the funny thing about reading both these books at the same time is I did not intend this, but they both like strongly referred to Shakespeare. I mean, If We Were Villains obviously is like basically about Shakespeare. Like, you know, it's about theater kids who like all they do is perform Shakespeare at this school and like Shakespeare is basically their life. And then um, When You Were Everything, the main character also happens to love Shakespeare and she like quotes her multiple times and like her dad quotes him like multiple times and I just thought that was really funny. I was honestly a little worried about if you were villains because you know the Shakespeare at the beginning was a little much and I didn't fully get into it until like I don't know halfway through but then I like really got into it and the characters I got really attached to. The ending was pretty great. I mean it kind of ends on a little bit of a question. If you know, you know. We ha we got a little bit of like a love triangle in there too. Like for sure, we definitely got a love triangle in there. And like the weirdest way, like if, you know, if we we're villains is about, you know, yeah, this sh group of kids who perform Shakespeare at the school, like a very prestigious theater school. And they have, they all have, it's like seven of them, they all have such a close bond. And it's kind of like a messy bond, you know, like, yeah, as I said, love triangle and a little toxic relationships and a lot of drama and by the end I was I was loving it I also gave that five stars I don't I went from one extreme to the other I went from like believing I would never find a five star to like just handing them out like candy you know I go back and forth on this whole five star thing like my ratings I feel like are just completely random I either I feel like I give everything like four stars but then at the same time, either giving absolutely nothing five stars when I feel like everyone else is giving the book five stars and I'm like, is something wrong with me? Like, am I supposed to be giving books five stars more often? Or like, are the books I'm giving five stars actually like six stars and I need to like reassess my ranking? They can't all be four stars, you know? Like some of them need to be three stars, but I just, I tend to enjoy books in general and I have been mainly reading books that have been like very well received so I think that's part of it like of course if I'm reading good books I'm gonna tend to give them better ratings but I also pick up a lot of books that I know aren't gonna be four stars but like I read them anyways just for funsies and maybe that's not great but I'm, I'm starting to steer away from that I'm starting to steer away I'm trying this year is less for giving up on books this year. This year is for finding out what I'm into more so because I've just got I've just gotten back into reading. So I'm reading a lot. And maybe next year I'll be a little more serious about not reading books that I don't care for. If that makes sense. <laughs> that was it. How many books did we read in this video? Let's see. We kind of read a few. I mean, I kind of included Misery, which was very close to five stars, but I only included it in this video because it wasn't five stars. Rock, Paper, Scissors, which was also very good. The Deal, I enjoyed. Pineapple Street. Like, I, I feel like I could have given Pineapple Street and Misery, I think, could have been five stars. Like, those are ones that, like, I might have been a little too harsh on. But Pineapple Street, like, I was just too distracted to give it five stars. Yeah, When You Were Everything and If We Were Villains. I just, it's the vibes, man. The endings for both of them just really tied everything together very well for me. Which put them at five stars. I honestly didn't think they were going to get there. But they did. And that is my <laughs> reading until we find a five star. I don't know if I enjoyed this experience. I didn't have a great time. 
it felt like a lot of pressure to find a five star read and I think I think it I took it a little too seriously. Like if I wasn't specifically looking for a five star read, I feel like I would have gotten there faster. Honestly. Yeah, overall we did great. We did great. This was fun. I hope you enjoyed. It was a little messy, but it's just how it is for now. Let me know down below what books you've given five stars recently because I want to know what books I should pick up next. What books have you guys been enjoying lately? Let me know. Anyways. Bye.